To continue our inspirational story series, we are joined in the Harvey Norman Lounge by Luke Chivers, who has recently spoken publicly about his struggles with body dysmorphia and bulimia in the hope to break the stigma and silence, in particular for Kiwi men around these disorders. Welcome to the show, Luke. Great. Thank you so much for having me. It is really nice to have you in the studio because, I mean, tell us a little bit about your story. I mean, what, what triggered your eating disorder? Yeah, well, that's, I wish, was a simple answer. Um, and it's always a multitude of things. But I think the, the real critical moment was training for an off-road marathon in 2013. And I very quickly became very obsessed with what foods went in or didn't go into my body. Um, within two weeks, it had just turned into a complete and utter obsession. Um, but that's not unusual for people that are doing extreme sports like that, is it? No, and I think the onset of it was very normal. Um, however, when you find yourself weighing your body six times a day and, and limiting your food every day uh, more and more, that's when I realised mm. things were going a little bit skewer. So was there a particular point, Luke, where that switch was, I guess, flicked and you thought, I may have some sort of issue going on here? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I just found this fear of food entirely building up. Wow. Um, even food groups like milk, which are totally safe to the average person, um, were fearful to me. So when that began happening, I realised I did need to try to go back to normal eating and come off this marathon diet. Mm -hmm. um, I won the race and there was no sense of fulfilment and that's when I realised that things needed to be reviewed and uh, it was my first meal I went out for with some friends. And within hours, it had spiralled into an extreme case of bulimia nervosa. Did you feel guilt about eating? Was that how it worked? I didn't have so much guilt. It was more so fear of what would happen if I did eat. What did I you think would happen? Groups. Like, What was your brain telling you would happen? Terrified of getting fat this innate fear of, of what fat could mean. Mm. And that's the thing with eating disorders. There are so many connotations with food and oneself, particularly size. Mm. Uh, so what did you do next to try and get on the road to recovery? So reaching out for help and speaking with some friends was key. Right. And getting some professional support as well. So that started just with a counsellor, a family friend. And as time went on and the severity certainly increased, I got some more professional health. So you used the health healthcare assistance? I did, but look, I don't say this lightly, it was hard yakka. Um, I think traditionally in the mental health system, we've been trained to look out for females with mm. eating disorders. And men often aren't recognised at all, if not undiagnosed or misdiagnosed. So uh, over four years and 13 mental health professionals later, I finally found myself getting out of the web, but it's not easy at the moment, which is a shame. Why do you think men resist help or even seeking that assistance? Oh, look, absolutely, it's stigma. Wow. Um, there is such a stereotypical view that men just don't have eating disorders. Mm. And if they do, then it's maybe working out at the gym a little bit too more, you know, too mm. more often. Well, speaking of that, as a male, I see quite often images of abs and fit people, and I, I want to be like that. How part does that play? How much does that play when you're suffering from a disorder and creating that stigma? Yeah, look, uh, it has a role to play. Absolutely, it's both the physiological and the psychological. But how we view our bodies and what success looks like in the physical form can start people, like myself, in a very dangerous cycle. Right. And so the ads we see on billboards, both for men and females, can put an over and under realistic um, expectation on what we can actually do with our bodies and what is normal or what's a real man. Yeah. And um, the onset of that can certainly over time escalate. Now the thing is, when men feel insecure in other parts of their life, and the same with females, they can focus so much on the body to perfect that part. Well, it's a which part they, they can, can control, control, isn't it? Absolutely. Mm. And if they fail to do that in their body, that may become well, you know, working too many hours, or it may be trying to be the funniest one in the party. And uh, for some people, like myself, it just spirals into mental illness. What do you hope to achieve from speaking out? Because to be honest, you are probably one of the first males in New Zealand to talk about this. So what, what do you want to achieve? Yeah, which I don't know if it's a badge of honour, but um, I'm pleased I've done it. And it's really because there are a lot of men out there. We just don't know about them yet. Mm. And globally, the statistics are rising rapidly. 
Traditionally, one in 10 males had eating disorders. Nowadays, it's around 25%. Good grief. Um, Nigel Owen spoke out only a matter of two months ago in the UK. And when I stumbled across his documentary online, I knew it was time for me. And just through the initial conversations I've had with friends, I've had a number of them say, that is me or that has mm. been me. Well, I think it's a great thing that you're speaking yeah. out because it is all about awareness and, uh, and, and well done. Very, very happy to have you on the show so we can help spread the word a little bit more. Absolutely. Uh, now, if you're worried about yourself or anyone else, you can contact your GP or you can call any of the numbers on the screen at the moment. Yeah, thank you very much, Luke. Yeah. Muchly appreciated.